Thank you. Uh, well, I'm the last thing standing between you and coffee, but please bear with me. Uh, I'm very excited to present my joint work with Mary Mori on time series prediction and online learning. And time series appear in many, many real world applications. Uh, stock values, different other economic variables, uh, climate, weather data, uh, which gets a lot of attention these days, right, to, due to the uh, climate change problem, uh, energy demand, sales, all of these often come in the form of time series. And in fact, one could even argue that all of the data that we're observing is time series data because we're collecting this data over time. So time series uh, uh, is an important uh, problem. And time series forecasting is one of uh, important key challenges in time series analysis. But it is also a very difficult problem. So let us actually look at an example here. So here I plot for you uh, US unemployment rate for the past 40 or 50 years. And you may look at this and say, well, it seems like there, there are some patterns here. Maybe there is some periodicity. But you also can notice that the data is highly non-stationary, for example, which makes this problem very difficult. And it fi in fact, it is uh, very challenging to forecast this unemployment rate. So time series prediction is uh, not only an important, but also a very challenging task. And traditionally, there has been two different uh, families of techniques that has been used to uh, tackle and analyze this problem. And the first family of techniques consists of making an assumption that uh, the data that we are observing has been generated by some unknown underlying stochastic process. Performance measure in this setting is the conditional expected loss of your time series forecaster. And there has been significant efforts uh, in learning theory literature trying to extend uh, existing uh, classical IID analysis and generalization bounds to less restrictive settings with perhaps stationary and mixing stochastic processes and beyond. And at the other extreme lies the second family of techniques, which is uh, that of online learning, very well known in this community, uh, completely adversarial scenario, uh, performance measure in this case is regret, and there is huge body of literature with uh, a lot of algorithms developed for different variants of this problem, in including uh, time series prediction as well, and forecasting of different non-stationary sequences. So it brings up a natural question whether we can somehow try to leverage both of these families of techniques to come up with a better analysis and better algorithms uh, for the problem of time series prediction and whether this combination can somehow help us to tackle other difficult problems in time series prediction, such as model selection and ensemble learning. And just uh, to give you an intuition why these problems are challenging, think about model selection uh, in the setting of time series. Unlike the usual IID setting, right, we do not have a luxury of uh, being able to pick a holdout set to select our models because this would uh, picking up out this holdout set would break an important structure that we have in the data set. Okay, so haven't given you the motivation for the problem and uh, for the questions that we would like to tackle. Let me formalize the learning problem for you. So what we're going to consider is the following setup. Uh, we assume that uh, we have access to a sample, which is a realization of some uh, unknown underlying stochastic process. And the goal for us would be to uh, try and find a hypothesis H in a hypothesis set capital H, which would have the smallest possible so-called path-dependent uh, generalization error, which is simply the expected loss of our hypothesis in the near future conditioned on the whole history that we have observed so far. And we will also assume that the learner will have 
and access to an online learning algorithm that minimizes the following general form of regret that you see at the bottom of this slide, which is simply the difference between the cumulative regret of the online uh, learning algorithm and the cumulative uh, loss of the best uh, uh, sequence in hindsight plus some arbitrary regularization term. Okay, uh, so note that we're not making any assumptions such as uh, stationarity or mixing here, which means that we will need some uh, other tool uh, to analyze this problem. And for us, this tool is going to be this new discrepancy measure that uh, we int introduce here. So if you actually, in fact, think about the non-stationarity in the problem, you'll quickly realize that uh, the key quantity that should somehow enter the analysis of this problem is the difference between the generalization error of the hypothesis that your algorithm played at time t plus 1 and the generalization error of that same hypothesis but at the time when you are trying to make your forecast capital T plus 1. And then if you average all these differences over all the hypotheses that your alg algorithm has played and look for the worst possible sequence of hypotheses that your algorithm could have played, that will give you exactly the discrepancy. So one way to think about this discrepancy is as a measure of non-stationarity of the stochastic process with respect to both the loss function and hypothesis set that we're using. And in fact, for instance, if the sequence was uh, IID, then this discrepancy would be exactly zero. So discrepancy has uh, other useful properties, but uh, the key property of this uh, new notion is that uh, under some additional mild assumptions, it can actually be estimated from data. And we'll see uh, later on that uh, that's important. Okay, so using this discrepancy, we can prove the following learning guarantee for our setup. Uh, in the simplest form, uh, it says the following, that if we're given a convex loss function L, and if we have a sequence of hypotheses H1, H2, up to H capital T, which is adapted to the uh, filtration of the stochastic process that we're dealing with, then generalization error of the ensemble hypothesis is going to be bounded by the following four terms. And three of these terms should be familiar to you. Uh, this is the best-in-class error, the average regret, and the last term is the term that vanishes as the sample size grows. And the new term in this bound is this discrepancy that I have introduced to you on the previous slide. So this result admits as special cases some of the previous results uh, for these kind of problems uh, that deal with IID sequences and stationary mixing sequences. We also extend this result to uh, non-adapted sequences of hypotheses, uh, general losses, and what is the most crucial thing, we extend it to arbitrary convex ensembles. And this is important because together with uh, the observation that our bounds are data dependent, uh, this directly leads to the algorithms, right? Uh, unfortunately, I will not have uh, any time to talk about these algorithms in any detail, but roughly speaking, the idea would be to try and seek uh, the convex ensemble of hypotheses that would directly uh, optimize this bound. Okay, so just to conclude, we give generalization guarantees for uh, time series forecasters that are derived from online learning algorithms. Our guarantees hold in most general scenario of non-stationary, non-mixing stochastic processes. Uh, and our bounds are data dependent, which means we can derive efficient algorithms uh, for different problems in time series predictions such, such as ensemble learning and model selection. So I'll conclude. Thank you.